Welcome back to The Compressor Guru. We're continuing work on this beast. This is a 10 horse Ingersoll Rand that a customer dropped on one side, turned around, dropped it on the other side. And friends, let me tell you something. I've been tinkering at this for two days and nothing has gone right. Uh, from right now, right down to where the simplest of things I needed, I can't find my assortment of terminal ends. This is for the ground in the starter for a number eight wire. I had number 10 to 12 wire for the ground. I couldn't find the number eight. The wire here, I sat down and do some prep work yesterday. We had another wire, it's out in the truck right now because I took it to the electric store. And it was too short because this starter is dimensionally different and smaller than the other one. And whoever wired this up before had it wired exactly the right length. You electricians out there are going to go, oh geez, but why do you do that? When I do wiring, I leave extra wire, I leave extra, see this, this, this isn't, the, see that? This isn't real tight. There's room to move. If they, if they have to adjust the motor, this will move. I don't know how they could have adjusted the motor because it was a BX, it was a, it was a steel cable. And if they had to pull the motor back any farther, they would have pulled the wires out of the starter. So there's room to adjust the motor and we're getting ready to put the new starter back in. The bolts didn't line up in the new housing from the old housing. So I had to drill new holes and retap holes to mount the starter housing. So the prep work has been terrible on this. Uh, but we're hoping things start going right now. And uh, this is going to be episode one of a couple, two, three episodes of us putting this back together. And this is going to be magnetic starter installation and wiring. Uh, now we're going to get to work. So in my troubles of putting this, getting this all ready, this is the only hole right here that I didn't have to redraw and retap. The box is properly mounted. I've rerun new wire. I had to go get number eight for four wire cable. I had to get new connectors. I will take. I will get the. Uh, I will get the old part out of the truck and show you on camera what we changed from and what we're changing to. You can see that as we speak right now. Oh. Are you crimping? I'm crimping and I'm grunting because I crimped real hard so that it doesn't come loose. Anytime you're putting wires together, <laughs> I need a washer. Nothing's been going right. I need to go get a washer. So I got a washer and it won't go through. <laughs> it will not go through the hole anymore. So we're going to slide this back up in position. Anyway, it's very important to make sure all your connections are tight, especially when you're dealing with motors. I can't believe you don't have to put tape over top of that wire. This is your ground, babe. Now, watch. That was a good hard pull. Sure it was. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 
had a comment from a viewer the other day. I really love the interaction between you and the, and the, and the camera wife. Yeah, sometimes it's wanted and sometimes, yeah. So here's the, here's the new magnetic starter. It's a square D and the heaters are not installed yet. I'm going to do that in a minute. But right now we're going to hook up the wires and then we're going to slip it back into where it goes. And it's, it's that easy to slip it in and attach it. Yeah, it's that easy to slip it in and attach it. But because my fingers are big and fat, we're going to do it. We're going to hook up the wires out here because there's not a lot of room in here to work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my wires. I have to work in there fairly close and then I'll attach it uh, after I have my wires hooked up. So I'm done talking here for a few minutes. I'm going to cut a couple wires. So, I'm going to take and back these screws. They're nice and tight. Do not be afraid of over torquing these screws. I don't know that I've ever seen one of these strip. one at a time and in no particular order. Are they color coded on, in the machine tube or in the... No, the needle say it's not even hooked up well because it's sitting here in the shop. But the compressor does have a certain direction it has to run. This compressor runs looking at the flywheel will run clockwise. So this is a three phase machine oh. and I'll, I'll retighten that again once I have it mounted where I can hold it better. This is a three phase 460 machine and on any three phase if you want to change the direction of the motor all you have to do is change any two leads. Now they won't change these leads they'll either change them here on the input side or they'll change them at the breaker at the power generator because this will be this is going to actually go to the woods and it will be set up with a gen set uh, to make power because the customer is Amish and they, even at the sawmill when it was on the edge of town, they didn't have power going to the office. They use a generator set and make their own power and they have a very uh, interesting way to get around their uh, Amish law on using electric. They have, and we're the English, you know, anybody that's not Amish is English. They, they have the English as a partner, and I know the partner, and I've never seen him at the, uh, at any of the jobs. I've never seen him at any of the jobs, but he owns the generator set, he owns the motors, and the Amish partner owns the equipment that the motors run. And I think, and I don't know, I, I'd be guessing if I put any more into it, but that way they get around the rule against them having electrical devices that they, they'll have an English partner. And, uh, the problem is, these guys aren't electricians, nor am I, nor do I play one on TV, no matter what you may think 
watching me work here. And the, the electricians out there are going, oh, geez, but you aren't an electrician. But getting back to where we started this on, when they hook this up, if that compressor is running in the wrong direction, all it takes to change it is change any two wires There's a place where the bottom of this slips in. Change any two wires, this one and this one, or this one and this one, or this one and that one. Change any two wires and that motor will run the other way. Now, Camera White, did you know that? I did not. Well, somebody learned something today. And that's my goal in this channel. I'm not taking this back apart, folks, but there was a second tab in the middle. There's a tab in the back, and I didn't know the second tab in the middle. I had to get both tabs lined up, and it actually held itself in place for me to get the screw started, which was very easy then. Idiot. Okay, that's mounted. Now we're going to take our straight screwdriver and we're really going to put the torque to these wires. No torque wrench? No torque. And I'll tell you what, there probably is a specified torque to these. But it's uh, tight. Tight is the actual number. And I don't know how you spell tight in numbers, but it's Height. And I cannot physically pull those wires out. Okay, the motor side of this is wired. We got our ground. This is wired. I didn't bother to show you the motor wiring. Uh, it was very simply just changing out the old conduit. Now we're going to take and got ourselves and I am not gonna leave this much extra wire even though I was talking about I like to leave extra wire we are going to take and we're going to put this wire in and then we're going to attach it to our uh, two probes Is that the hole you were talking about, Bill? <laughs> I guess. I was trying to see it, but it was pretty hard for me. Let's see. Is that it actually shows up in the other picture. See this? I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten excited, put that in, and forgot to put this on. And then I have to take all my wires loose, put that over the wire, run it up in to secure the connector that goes into the box. And when I say, I can't tell you how many times, it's definitely more than a handful. That's good and secure when one of the Amish boys decide he's going to pick it up by picking on this, he shouldn't be able to pull it out. And I'm going to have to, I need at least enough wire to get my ground over there so I can put my ground under that bolt that we already connected. So what we're going to do is we're going to put both wires on one connector. But what we're going to do is we're going to put this one in and then we're going to
to slide the number eight bar in right next to it and have both grounds on one crimped spot. Oh. Okay. And now we'll put that back on the bolt. Put the bolt back on. Strip that bowl out. You want this one over there or zeroed in any more than what it is? I don't know. I've been wa I haven't been watching that one at all. No, I meant the one here. Okay. So after I stripped the uh, factory bolt. I went over the bolt bin, I got a new bolt out, and it's much longer, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to double nut on the other side. And since that's not the original bolt, and I have threads coming out the other side, I will put a lock nut on the other side of this, just to be safe. Okay, so our ground's now hooked up and basically in the way. We're going to take a white wire and we're going to cut it and put it right there. I'm going to cut it to that length. And we will take and do a nice close-up while I point out all the wires here after we're done. So we got that little screw right there, and that's what we're going to go under. And then I'll explain how this wiring is working. We're going to put this terminal end on this white bar. Check it. Good. And there's a Phillips. And I'm going to have bare time with my big ape hands getting this done. And those are not magnetic screwdrivers. No, for what I paid for them, they should put the screw in for you. Put that through the screw. Okay, so that's part of the switch. And we're going to cut that for right there. I guess I should cut it. <laughs> I thought those that was the neatest tool when I was a kid helping dad in a garage. What, a magnetic stick? <laughs> no. Oh. No, your little cutter there. Oh. Your splicing tool or whatever it's called. We used to practice on old pieces of wire for dad. Yeah? Yeah. It was fun.
Are you going to put a terminal on that? Nope. Don't, don't have a blade terminal for it. Oh. Well, when you're far enough along to move your left hand. Now, that's going to get re-loosened by the electrician that hooks this back up. So I don't have to make sure this one's so terrible tight. This is the heater. Okay. And there's three of them. And... We all know that every once in a while you have to go out and push a reset button on your starter, on your motor, and this is why. These are, this is sized, when I ordered the starter, we took the uh, horsepower and the full load amps and the voltage of the machine, and we had the heater sized so that if that motor starts running hard, because the motor's going bad, or maybe the compressor's binding up. When it draws more amperage, this will actually get warm. And when it gets warm, there's basically a uh, piece of lead that melts because the heater that's too much amperage, the heater that too much amperage is going through heats up and the lead melts inside of it and drops away from a couple points and the connection is then lost going to the motor and the motor shuts down and then you, come, you wait a few minutes, you come out, you push on the reset and you actually reform the lead in the in, in or behind the heater and when you do that you have your connection you can turn your motor back on so when they talk about or putting a heater in or uh, having a heater size this is actually your heater and it is just sized for the it is sized for the particular application we're going to put these three in, and then we're going to do some close-ups, and I'm going to talk about where the power runs and why things work. Hold that over there. So folks, we are done with this job and I wanted to do a nice close-up with you to show you what we've done. And this part of the job is ready to go back to the customer. However, we're going to be back with a couple more episodes where we're going to install an after-cooler, a non, an aftermarket after-cooler on this job, on this unit. Uh, and we're also going to clean out the crankcase because they really let the oil get super dirty and I'm not going to let it go like that. But as far as this job goes, we are grounded. We put both grounds into one terminal and attached it securely. Our three wires to the motor 
are attached to the three terminals on the, well, it's the right side. Normally, a lot of these are mounted upright, and this is actually the bottom of the machine. We installed our uh, heaters, and they're set. Them being set, you can't see the mechanism that re-gears it to reset the lead. And I don't know if it's lead or not. The electricians out there may leave a comment going, Bud, you don't know what you're talking about. I am not an electrician. I am a compressor specialist. I know enough electric to do things like this. So we came in from the pressure switch to, and we run the ground over to that terminal. Now getting in here tight, this terminal and this terminal are the two terminals for the coil that make this a magnetic switch. And the, we are completing the circuit by going into this terminal with a wire from the uh, switch and we're powering it there. We are putting power to that side and we're breaking the power at the switch because we go from this black wire up to the pressure switch that's either open or closed and then it comes back from the pressure switch into this side of the terminal. Now you have to power both sides of the terminal. This is a 220 coil. Uh, so in order to power both sides of the terminal, and yes, I'm not on a tripod, in order to power both sides of the coil, we pick the power up on the other side. And this is a, this is a blade connector, but it actually hooks to this side of the coil like we hooked to that side of the coil. And we come down here to the bottom side of the heater and we can't see it for the wires, but we actually pick up the power off the L2 lug and uh, we go back to the coil on this side of the coil. Now, if the heaters go, we're wired into the heater block, and if the heaters go, if one of the heaters disconnects, that breaks the circuit going to the coil, and I hate how unsteady I am. That breaks the circuit going to the coil, so if the heater, if we have a heater overheat, it disconnects the power going to the coil. And when the power goes, quits going to the coil, the points that the coil holds together to make the machine run inside of here, and I can demonstrate that by when the coil's activated, it actually goes together like that. So if the coil, if the pressure switch is open, this little button's out like that. When the pressure switch is closed, it slams together, and the big points inside the contactor, that's why it's called a contactor, the big points inside the contactor allow juice to flow to your motor and run the machine. So, very simply, we have power going to one side of the coil and we break it at the pressure switch and we have power going to the other side of the coil and if the heaters go, it breaks the power going to the other side of the coil and we have to have power going to both sides of the coil to operate the, the uh, contactor. Folks, this is the last we're going to see of this particular unit because when it goes out in the field, uh, the electrician will hook uh, up a wire here, a wire here, and a wire there. And that's literally all he has to do and then turn the generator set on to make this run. So that being said, once again, I'm going to put in the description links to the pressure switch and links to the videos we have on magnetic starters that we did with my brother-in-law. And we're going to tell you all about it, uh, the, the functionality of it. And, but you, you got the drawing and you got the intellectual part of it with the uh, brother-in-law, the electrical 
genius, but here you saw the hands-on of putting a magnetic starter on a 10 horsepower Ingersoll. So folks, we're, uh, we're awful glad we're starting out the new year with you. This is the hands-on of how to change a magnetic starter, how to install a magnetic starter. We will put in the description our links to uh, my brother-in-law, Eric, the electrical uh, engineer, the electrical guru, the electrical genius. I don't know what we should call him. But uh, anyway, we're going to take and uh, put those links in for the pressure switch and for the magnetic starters that we've got uh, videos up on. Those are the drawings on the whiteboard and Eric explaining it. Here you saw the hands-on of how to wire them up. And as you see, I got hands like a gorilla and the, work doing these little tiny screws and getting these wires fitted is not my cup of tea. I want to wish you a happy and prosperous new year. If you made a resolution, let's try to stick to it. We don't make resolutions to do bad things. We make resolutions to do good things. And remember, all good and perfect gifts come from our God. God bless you. Have a great day.